Um, okay. Good morning, church. Um, today I want to talk to you about how we should not be prejudiced towards other religions just because um, a certain group or a certain person has done wrong. And um, a good comparison for that is the Ku Klux Klan, which was established in 1867. And they were prejudiced against um, black people, and they would lynch them and hang them and do all these horrible things to them. And the KKK was actually, um, they practiced Christian, Protestant Christian beliefs, and they believe very strongly about that. So I ask you, is it okay that us as Christians, we judge other people like such as Islam and um, Muslims when we ourselves are people that practice the same um, things like Christianity, like the Ku Klux Klan? They committed all these hate crimes, but yet we see that we can judge Islam when really it's not the whole religion that's bad. It's just certain people that practice that religion or certain groups from that religion that... Um, practice these bad things and these hate crimes and um, give us give that certain group like a bad name and that's where prejudice and um, judgment comes in. Um, we should not be um, we should not judge um, a certain group just because of the things that they've done like um, Islam like uh, Osama bin Laden and um, the Al Qaeda, just because they're Islamic, doesn't mean that the whole of Islam is um, a bad religion, because there's actually some similarities between Islam and Christianity. In this speech, I'm going to inform you first about how the Bible, more specifically the Old Testament um, and the Quran, are similar, and how um, Jesus and Muhammad kind of serve as two foundational figures in both religions Jesus for Christianity and Muhammad for. Um, Islam. And lastly, I'm going to talk to you about how prayer in both of these religions serves, um, although they're not the same, although we don't pray the same way as Muslims do, um, prayer in both religions um, is an important factor and um, is an important thing in our religion. So first I'm going to talk to you about how the Bible, more specifically the Old Testament and the Quran, are similar. In the Bible, even from the very beginning, in the Bible and the Quran, it states that um, in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it states that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in the Quran, it also states in um, chapter 2, verse 163, Praise be to God who created the heavens and the earth, in darkness and in light. And similarly, in the Quran and in the Bible, they both speak about how the, um, there is only one true God. And in the Bible, it states in Mark 12, verse 29, that um, we're supposed to only praise God and um, only God only, and there is no other gods but him, not like the sun god or the moon god, but there's only one God. And similarly, the Quran, they also talk about Allah, which means God um, in Arabic. And um, they talk about how there is only one God, although they believe in um, prophets and stuff like that, that also lead the people, um, they only believe in one God. And also in the Bible and in the Quran, um, they talk about, they have similar beliefs on what heaven is. And in the Quran, it talks about how heaven is a place for the righteous, it's a place of paradise, it's where um, all the righteous go and will they, where they will abide. And um, the, the rivers flow um, from God and um, through the streets of um, the righteous. And um, also in the Bible, it talks about, um, in Proverbs, it says that, um, um, that heaven is the place um, where the shameful and deceitful are not welcome and where um, all those who do good, all those who lead a righteous life and treat those um, just as they want to be treated um, are also welcome. So now that I've talked to you about the similarities between the Quran and the Bible, um, I'm going to talk to you about the similarities between Abraham, or Muhammad, and um, Jesus, and how they're both um, two foundational figures in both religions. And for Christianity, um, Jesus is seen as the Savior, although Muhammad is not in Islam. Um, Jesus and Muhammad both um, believe and taught about how there was one true God, and they also both um, they also both believe in Abraham and Jesus actually speaks of Abraham um, and he speaks of him and he says um, Abraham is a righteous man and 
he is um, true to his righteousness. And even um, it even says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, it says, And Jesus said to him, um, said to Abraham, or said about Abraham, that um, he is a righteous man, and um, God has blessed him, and to um, he made him a leader for the people. And he says um, in the Quran, um, it says that um, he um, he said to him that um, God challenged Abraham and with his commands, and when Abraham obeyed his commands, he said, "Behold, um, I grant you as a leader of my people." And um, also, Jesus and Muhammad never wrote any books, um, but. Jesus, um, through his teachings and through his uh, preaching to his disciples, his disciples recorded his word, and that was actually translated into the New Testament. And uh, for Muhammad, he was, um, the angel of Gabriel was sent down to him and spoke to him, and Muhammad therefore spoke um, the Quran to his followers. And the Quran actually needs um, recitation in Arabic, and... Um, so uh, Muhammad spoke and recited the Quran to all his followers, and his followers then translated it um, into paper, and um, from there, all his followers could um, have like a hard copy of what he was saying. Now that I spoke to you about the similarities between um, Jesus and Muhammad, I'm going to talk to you about the similarities between um, prayer in both religions. And although prayer in both of the religions is different, how in, um, us as Christians, we pray um, not at a certain time, we pray... Just any time of the day, uh, wherever we are, it doesn't matter. Um, it can be silent, it can be out loud, um, it can be before we go to bed, um, kneeling down. But prayer for us is seen as um, our relationship with God. When we pray, we do it because we want to get closer to God and we want to build our relationship with Him. And um, Islam and Muslims, they also do the same thing, but they just do it differently. They pray five times a day in a prayer called Salat. And um, it's on a mat facing towards Mecca, and Mecca is um, seen as the holiest city in, um, in Islam. So, although we pray differently, the, um, the functions of prayer are the same. Um, Muslims pray um, to be closer to God, and so do we. Although they do it, um, they do it more of a ritually prayer, and we do it more um, as just like, um, it's not an obligation, it's just um, what we like, want to do, it's a choice. Um, it's still the same thing, it still serves the same purpose. And um, so now that I've talked to you about prayer, um, I'm going to tell you that we as Christians should be more understanding and not judgmental of other religions, especially when us as Christians or people that claim themselves to be Christians were biased towards people and um, they committed hate crimes and Similarly, Islam is seen as this religious group that commits hate crimes, but it's actually not Islam as a whole. It's just a certain group of people, the Al-Qaeda, and people like Osama bin Laden um, that have done these horrible things, and they've created a stereotype for Islamic people. Um, so today I talked to you about how um, the Quran and the Bible are similar, the Old Testament and the Quran are similar, how... Jesus and Muhammad are similar, and they're seen as two foundational figures in both of these religions, and how prayer um, in both religions is the same, and it serves the same purpose, even though they're um, carried out differently. And we as Christians need to be more understanding, because God has called us to be people of understanding, and Proverbs 16, verse 22 says, understanding is the foundation of life um, to those who have it, but fully to those who don't. And Proverbs 6, verse 2 also says that understanding is the way of life. And I believe that this is who God has called us to be. And we should be more accepting and more loving because we were created in God's image. And um, God is not judging, and he's all-powerful. And God is the only judge. Um, God is the ultimate judger of mankind.